The central banks have created fictional markets, ones that require these consistent and never-ending stimulus measures to be put in place at ever-increasing levels. The question is, how long can this last? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's happening with the central banks. I have a very quick video to get into this topic here. Got some issues to show you, of course, when we look at this from the central bank level, but also what's happening with the government. The fiscal spending has been absolutely astronomical right now at this time. A lot to cover. Let's begin. Here you can see the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. I'll give you an update with the latest numbers later this week. But right now we're looking at the data from May 28th, 2020. Right now you can see that the Federal Reserve is printing a considerable amount of money. There's no doubt about that. But they're not alone in the situation. As you can see, the ECB doing the exact same thing. The Federal Reserve has the biggest balance sheet of them all when you look at this in, of course, nominal terms. But the ECB's trying to catch up they're all trying to catch up of course as you look at how much money they've been printing and this has created an especially good environment for risk assets when you see these risk assets like equities for instance it has pushed them up higher because when there is this massive flood of currency in the system typically you would see these risk assets see the benefit of it because of a devaluation of the currency when you have central banks printing money essentially people go out and find places to put their cash they don't want to necessarily keep it under their mattress in so many cases because they know it's going to be worth less tomorrow you can see this in extreme levels when you go to developing nations where their inflation rates are really high of course they're buying anything they can they'll buy cars they'll buy houses they'll buy literally anything because the cash on hand is worth less and less and less and they may not necessarily trust the banking system as well that's happening to a lesser degree today in many places but it's still proving a point a little bit of humor here we have a giant fed cycle that looks like it's never going to stop is the fed lift powerful enough to offset negative news they acted with leadership and acted early and were aggressive they did everything they could and it's helping it may be just that simple the fed is not alone and analysts also point to global central banks including the ecb expected to expand its programs this week of course they're going to increase all of the central banks will but think about this for a second it may be just that simple printing money fixes every problem wow this is amazing and i can't believe that cnbc actually printed this without a little asterisk beside it and saying you know this is a joke but this is the way that it is come on you can't take this information seriously and yet it's put out there as if it is this is just ridiculous when I have to see this all the time. It's not that simple. They've tried this every single time before in all cycles, and it always ends badly. They lied to you when they said they were going to pull back on their quantitative easing, on their balance sheet expansion. They were upset about this. Everybody was upset about it throughout the whole period when they were putting in all the different programs, TARP bailout, cash for clunkers, CEOs getting bonuses like crazy. This is, you know, unbelievable. We're going to just cause havoc. There was Occupy Wall Street. Oh my goodness. Everything is terrible. Now today, it's the exact opposite. They are loving this. Something is completely completely messed up after you have to have stimulus for 11 years and then what do you do to resolve that which clearly didn't fix the problem 11 years straight in a row that's right you do the exact same thing but to an even greater degree what a world we live in Wharton professor Jeremy Siegel said Tuesday that the stock market rally isn't over thanks to the massive support from the Federal Reserve. Well, that's called pointing out the obvious, but here's the quote. I think this rally has further to go. It has all those doubters there, but it's the liquidity from the Fed provided that I think is the prime determinant. And of course, this is what we're looking at. It's very clear to me anyway, that when you have this maximum stimulus, this huge liquidity that's been pumped into the system, 
system, of course, that's going to have an impact. And in this case here, it's a positive impact. The problem is, what do you do when real deflation starts to take hold? How much further can you go without completely ruining everything? It looks like without the Federal Reserve, markets would collapse in a matter of days, if not weeks. So when we look at this, it's not too positive. Even the PBOC is getting in on this. PBOC unveiled $60 billion plan to aid small business credit. This is what they're doing. Other central banks, other governments, they have their own actions. Essentially, what we have here is a huge collapse in activity on all levels. The economy is just destroyed globally, and they're trying to pump it back up. They're trying to get it to recover, but the programs that they do are always funneled through a system that in the end you get crumbs that's it that's all that's left over it's like putting in a whole loaf of bread and then you get a bunch of crumbs at the end seems kind of wasteful but that's what they do this is definitely some reading that you have to do if you have some time. I always talk about follow the money. You've got to look at this on a deeper level. And of course, all these statistics, all these indicators in and of themselves, they don't mean too much. But when we start to put everything together, wow, it really paints a picture. This treasury official is running the bailout. It's been great for his family. What? Look at this. Deputy Treasury Secretary Justin Muzinich has an increasingly prominent role. He has still has ties to his family's investment firm, which is a major beneficiary of the Treasury's bailout actions. They have given you details further below. I highly recommend reading it. Essentially, profiting off of what's happening. It reminds me a lot of what we saw with Paulson back in, I guess that was 2008 or so, giving himself a $200 million tax break. Isn't it so fantastic? We've seen many examples like this before. It will continue into the future. And unfortunately, this is just the way it is. The average person always gets screwed over and it's never going to change apparently. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to check me out on Instagram and Twitter and anywhere else, you can do so at the Money GPS. If you want to learn how to sell online, you can do so at the AmazonGPS.com. I have a free, 100% free e-course for you. Definitely go there, the AmazonGPS.com. Learning about the financial system is difficult. I know when I first started, it was so complex. Reading all these texts, I was just confused. I wish I had something to actually start from. Where is the beginning? Where is the beginning? And of course, I created the books that I wish I had read in the first place. You can check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook, themoneygps.com. Wait a second, do not go anywhere. Have you seen this video? It's really important. It has so much data. Check it out. I'll see you there.